Today, I met a witch, and we convinced her to sit down and answer some questions. I'll let you introduce yourself. Hi, I'm Ari. I work at Pentagram here in Salem, and I've been a witch for a few years. Wow. Wow. I can definitely say this is the first time I've ever sat down with like a real witch. That we know of. Exactly. <laughs> so what exactly like is a witch? A witch is someone who believes in the power of nature, in the power of manifesting their int intentions within the world, and someone who just likes to have fun. Right on. So maybe, uh, Jake, you and I are maybe witches. We might be. You are wearing black. I'm yeah. Saying. Hey, you never know. We also got some Turkish food that we're going to be enjoying, so let's get that out and then we'll start hammering away with some questions. So I guess my question is, is like, are people born witches or are you, were you born into the witch lifestyle or did you develop it? So some people are born into it and those are hereditary witches, which is who have a family history lineage of it. Okay. And some are like me who just kind of discovered it along the way. Maybe uh, as a kid you mix potions with muds and sticks and flowers. Right. Or you found yourself kind of drawn to crystals or all of a sudden staring at the moon was a really fun pastime. Do you think that people who are hereditary with it have, like have more of abilities or is it kind of just an equal playing field i've seen both so people who have hereditary have a, like a, a longer experience they have more practice time they have more time to kind of develop it and they're often more encouraged to develop it going off of that do you feel like being a witch being a witch out here in salem you feel judged no. just because of everything that's happened or in salem no oh my gosh it's no. embraced oh yeah i could walk around with a broomstick all day and they'd be like hey where'd you get that really because uh. we were actually when we were going through different stores trying to figure out who we could talk to mm -hmm. a lot of people didn't want to give any names they kind of were pointing us what? in directions because they didn't want to out people i guess that's out of respect yeah uh. so in a community kind of like back when they were having um not that it's the same but back when there weren't as many gay rights back as when you know people were kind of in the closet about being gay yeah you wouldn't you wouldn't want to out someone right so a lot of people out of respect for their fellow witches will keep it secret and it's a person's individual decision as to whether or not they come out interesting did you feel like when you were ready like were you pretty out with it no you kept no. it a secret no this is actually the first time i've said it on camera really oh, wow scandalous. we got breaking news here guys Oh, yeah. <laughs> this is good. <laughs> wow. How the media, like, depicts a witch. How do you feel about that? How accurate is, like, some of the stuff? Like, right. Well, you have a wide range, you know? You have, like, the Wizard of Oz. And, yeah. like, oh, I'm going to get you my pretties. And, like, okay, great. The green face. And right. Yeah. And, yeah. and then you have, like, Practical Magic, where you have a family of hereditary witches and their struggles with that. And then you have Sabrina the Teenage Witch, which mm. is this weird sort of combo of the devil's trying to date someone. I don't know. Yeah. Right? yeah. So we kind of take it all in stride and it's the same sort of like, I don't know. Hollywood's kind of weird and I accept it and it's, right. it's good. And I don't, that's why I don't introduce myself as like, Hey, I'm RM, which I let people get to know me first. Mm -hmm. And then I talk about, um, herbs mm. and they're like, all right, that's kind of cool. Like I talk about baking with lavender to kind of help create nice calm cookies for your kids do you feel like when you meet another witch like there's an automatic connection where you know that they're a witch before they tell you there are some things that we kind of look out for like if someone's wearing a pentagram or a pentacle or if they have a lot of moon jewelry on mm. a lot of people say well what if they're wearing all black no that's just slimming that's <laughs> sometimes you do find people that you're drawn to especially if you're like going to classes or if you're taking online seminars and all of a sudden these things kind of like start to make sense yeah. like ah, oh, that's what we're doing when i'm doing my own research i know that there's like different like groups i guess like that witches mm -hmm. study in and are you a solo witch or are you kind of like in a like a, a group what do you call it a coven a coven are you in a coven i am oh i'm a coven witch okay wow. so there are a bunch of different types of witches what you're talking about is eclectic solitary Hereditary Garden, um, Green Witch, White Witch, Grey Witch. Like, we, there's like a plethora. There's a whole tree out there with branches going everywhere. Mm -hmm. And which is really nice because it allows someone to really channel into and hone into what they find interesting, what they find they're drawn to. Like, for me, I'm, um, I'm in a coven and I'm at 
Celtic traditional Gwenaid, and I also really practice a lot with herbs. So I'm more of like a kitchen witch okay. or like an herbal witch, things like that. When you talk about a coven, what I picture in my head is like American Horror Story, <laughs> the season coven where they're all doing I like. Wish. It's, it's not like be that. Amazing. No. <laughs> oh man. And, um, Again, depending upon the tradition. Mm -hmm. um, it's basically just a bunch of people who kind of all believe in the same thing. They get together. Depending upon the tradition, they follow a certain rule, a certain order of things. And then they circle. They have fun. They do some magic. And then afterwards, you just eat a lot of food and drink some wine. Dang, man. We're in the, we got to join this. I'm just saying. Yeah. <laughs> you know, it's a lot of fun. Sounds like fun. And when you say doing magic, like... Mm -hmm. What, what are we talking about here? Are we talking about Houdini making things disappear? Yeah, so or, we change our hair color? Or what? I'm, I'm curious. Right. No. Setting out your intention that you want in the world. Okay. So just like manifesting something. Mm -hmm. So um, last year I went through a lot of health issues. So my manifestation was for health and wellness. So mm -hmm. whenever I was in circle, I was focusing on what I could do to make myself healthier, bringing in that, that intention, focusing on making my body heal itself. I'm happy to say I'm not sick anymore, so yeah. That's amazing. That's good to hear. Mm -hmm. That is really good to hear. So obviously, you know, Salem is really known for the, the, the witch trials back mm -hmm. in 1692. Mm -hmm. The people that were like hung and pressed and all that, do you feel like they were actually like witches or do you think they were just innocent people caught so up in Personally, I think that it's a, a combination of both. Uh -huh. I think some of them were practicing what's called folk magic, um, where it's like, you know, you'd plant ro rosemary by your garden to draw in love or you would hang a horseshoe over your door to bring in luck mm. or so you put a crystal under your bed to like ward off negative energy mm -hmm. stuff like that yeah exactly oh wow so yeah. it wasn't really like what they teach you in history like these people were actually like doing witchcraft and They're, they weren't out to like hurt anyone right a lot of it also was very political but so how so so they were after a lot of land so let's say you you know it's a farming community right yeah so you're only able to produce so much on your land. Right. Right? But your friend next door has as much land as you, and his land might be more fertile. Uh. Well, you're a witch. And then you, they take oh, the land. Oh, guess what? You can't keep your property anymore. Yeah. Let me buy some stuff. Wow. Damn. So it really was just like a whole scheme almost. There's was a lot going on. That I think a lot of the history doesn't cover. Yeah. And I as didn't you find that. out later, our kids know. We don't... Yeah. My immediate family knows yeah. because I'm very close with them and they're right. very supportive. But it's not like you're going to come to my house. Well, actually, that's not true. There's a broomstick hanging in my house. Is there really? <laughs> do you actually hop like, on it and fly around town? Uh, I do. I get tickets sometimes. It's, you know. <laughs> no, no, no. So a broomstick for a witch is called a bisong. Mm. And it's hung in the house in a certain way to collect the luck. Mm. And then when you want to cast a circle, you would use it to sweep out the negativity. Oh. Yeah, that way. And you bring in good fortune. Oh, wow. I didn't even know all that. So, uh, we uh, sell them in the store. Yeah, I saw those. Are those like the yeah, actual... they're made from, uh, made in England and brought over. Are there witches out there who do practice, like, dark magic? Yeah. And there what... are. It's just too much energy in so many jars. It's not even worth it. And, and like, what, what could they... Like, could they really actually set curses on people and all that? Or what's it like... So... My personal belief is that no one has power over you unless you give it to them. Right. And that goes across not just witchcraft, that's in life as well. Exactly. You know, you got a bad boss, guess what? Your shitty day lasts only as long as you allow it to. That's true. You clock out at five, you don't have to take any of that home with you. Yeah. Magic is the same way. There are certain things that people do to protect themselves against it. Um, certain, you know, stones people carry, certain, you know, pouches, herbs, things like that to kind of ward all that off and you, you know, I'm sure you guys have seen like the the, the evil eye mm -hmm. the yeah. blue yeah so that's meant to repel anything that's cast upon mm. you that's yeah have, <laughs> have you met like a, a a dark magic practicing witch not intentionally oh see, but see. You, you see sometimes when you meet someone you're like oh yeah that would make sense like just like those evil people that could be a witch like an evil witch without even thinking about it mm -hmm. your thoughts have a lot of power so if you are out in the world and you're like, I hate life, I hate you, I hate this, I hate that, you're just shitting that everywhere. And if you're you're doing that, then you really have to be mindful of, of why. Right. You know, and that's when you get into something called shadow work, where you have to go into yourself and really focus on what your issues are and whether or not you're going to come out on the other side. Hopefully this doesn't take come up wrong, but you, is it like you don't believe in God? Is that... We believe in many gods. Okay. We are um, a multifaceted, wonderful religion of awesome. Got it. So we believe that there's a god and a goddess. 
That's one of the main differences, is that um, actually in our religion, the goddess almost takes precedent over the god because she is life, she is fertility, she is the reason that we are here. And the god... The god, hi, direct hi, highlights. There. Thank you for the light. <laughs> the um, the god helps to protect and facilitate that. Okay. Male energy and a feminine energy. What were those called again? Uh, the high priest and the high priestess. Okay. And then, what is their like job in the coven? So their job is to kind of bring in the energy to, but also to kind of help oh, we control got the us. Heads. <laughs> <laughs> if you love Salem, you should see the crackheads in LA. <laughs> oh my god, I have. I have. Yeah. yeah, they're next level stuff. Yeah, that was fun. So we have a high priest and a high priestess. And it's their job to really help to facilitate the education, the um, structure of the coven. So when you say education, are you talking about like a, a book of spells? We have what's called the Book of Shadows that we keep our practice in. Okay. It's very private, and most religions will never share it without really? sorry. Wow. Yeah, you have to go through initiation, oh, wow. orientation, and classes. And what's like an initiation like? I can't tell you. Oh wow! Sworn to oath. Really? Yes. That's awesome. That is insane. Is, is there anyone that has, I guess, our blood lineage from the witch trials like era like that you know of? That Not that still, I know of personally, uh, but I know that there are still some of their family around. Wow. wow process to become a witch is it something that has to be decided by someone else or is it at any point you can just call yourself a witch it depends so if you want to be in a coven it does have to be decided by someone else by your high priest and your high priestess as to whether or not you would fit in because it's kind of like you know any sort of social club yeah if you're like hey we're all like got this good vibe going we all you know but then you're a debbie downer we all think that yellow is the best color and then you come in and you're like i really like magenta we're all just kind of like well yeah just doesn't fit we'll see um, but we do embrace variety, but we want everyone to kind of like, we're all believe in the same tradition, we're all following the same goals. What would you tell someone that wants to become a witch but doesn't know like what, where to start, how to like get uh, into it? Find an amazing store like Pentagram, shameless plug, <laughs> and uh, any place that has like a good book collection. Okay. Don't be afraid to read something, even if you think it's not what you're looking for, it might guide you someplace that you need to be. So there are tons of books out there about being a green witch, a cottage witch, a hedge witch. So we, I ended up with um, Buckland's Complete Book of Witchcraft, which goes over kind of the bones of everything and what you use an athame for, what you use a chalice for, what you use a pentacle for, what you use this for, that for, how to set up a basic altar. And those sorts of books um, are few and far between when you, when you find one that's just about the bones of it. Yeah. And then from there you learn more about the different you know, you Gardenarian, Alexandrian, uh, Gwenane, Celtic traditionary, all that fun stuff. Just having this conversation alone is like intrigued me to like want to do more research <laughs> about it. Definitely, you know? 100% I agree. Because like, how cool would it be to just be like, I'm in a cup, you know? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that would be so rad. Thank you so much no for, you know, sitting, sitting down, down with yeah. us. Like, this Thank is such guys. an honor to be able to have this conversation because it's not every day you get to sit down with the witch. No. So, <laughs> thank you for that. And I know you said you had a podcast. Uh, <laughs> so being a mom, being a witch, there weren't a lot of resources out there for me. So I decided to create my own. Uh, people can follow along at New Moon Mom. I'm on Facebook, Instagram, and I have a little bit of a podcast on uh, Anchor. Right on. And basically what I do is I talk about my kids, and I do a lot of worksheets for anyone who's interested in learning along with us. Wow. There you go. We'll link those down below. And visit Pant- Pentagram. Visit, visit Pentagram. Pentagram. They, like, honestly, this all happened because of Pentagram, so... That wraps up this video, guys. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, smash the thumbs up, hit the subscribe button, pick up the merch, brennantaylor.com, and until next time, we'll see you guys later. Peace. Peace.